So, we are dealing with SUN, and I take a diagram, and the number of boxes in this column is N. If I was to anti-symmetrize n vectors, what would it be? Well, it would be, I can use the epsilon tensor to do the anti-symmetrization for me. Then maybe I would have my first vector. I would have my second vector. I would have my nth vector. What do you know about that thing when you perform a transformation? It is invariant, right? Remember that? We said SUN has got two invariants. The one was the inner product between the two vectors, complex inner product. The other one was this thing, right? So if we've got n boxes in a row, this thing is a scalar. So if you've got n boxes in a row, you can forget about that. You can drop that off your diagram. That thing doesn't transform. OK? So you certainly shouldn't count that as a new irreducible representation. Now, there are some rules. Um, that have been given um, to calculate what is the dimension of one of these representations. Okay, So let me tell you what the rules are. Of course, one thing that you should be able to go away and convince yourself of is the following. If you just have n boxes in a row, then you're really considering the number of tensors that you have that have that many indices perfectly symmetrized, and each index can take on capital N values. So you should be able to convince yourself how many independent tensors there are. So that's an easy check. And if you've got all of these boxes in a column, then you know that the tensor is anti-symmetric amongst swapping all of these indices. And you again know each index can take n values. So that's again something that you should easily be able to check. So you can at least check two cases of the rule that I'm going to give you. Um, the rule that I'll give you is called the weights over hooks rule. Um, and it works like this. <coughs> So let's put down a diagram. Are there any questions at this point? OK. So let's put down a diagram. Maybe that looks like this. So this is a specific representation of SUN. Now you might want to know what dimension is this representation. To work out the dimension, this is the first thing you do. You write down the weights. And the way that you do that is redraw the diagram. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Five. And the next row, we've got one, two, three, four. And then in the last row, we've got two. Put an N in that box over there. Every time you move sideways, you add one. So here we put in an N plus one, an N plus two, N plus three, N plus four. And every time you come down, you subtract one. So this would now be n minus 1, n, n plus 1, n plus 2, n minus 2, n minus 1. Is it clear what the rules are for filling in the weights? I'm just giving you a recipe now. Um, and then we can calculate what are called hooks. Calculate the hooks, you draw exactly the same diagram again. So again, we'll start off with five boxes. One, two, three, four, five. And then the row just below, let's go four boxes. And then on the very bottom row, let's go two boxes. And now what we do is we imagine drawing what, what people usually call elbows through the diagram. 
and the actual angle of the elbow is in the box that you're looking at. So if we look at this box, we would draw an elbow like that. Okay? And now we count the number of boxes that we went through. We went through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven boxes. So I'll put a seven there. Um, let's take a look over here. How many boxes did I go through? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'll put a six there. Um, let's take a look over here. How many boxes did I go through? One, two, three, four. So I'll put a four there. Um, there is three. So I put a three there. Here, of course, is just one. That would be one. That would be two. One, two, three, four. That would be four. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Five. Everybody happy with how I'm getting the numbers in those boxes? Anyone who's not sure? Okay. And now the rule is, to get the dimension of the representation, take the product of all of those. So n, n plus 1 n plus 2, n plus 3, n plus 4, n minus 1, n, n plus 1, n plus 2, um, n minus 1, so n minus 2. And in the denominator, we take the product of all of those numbers. 7 times 6 times 4 times 3, times 1, times 5, times 4, times 2, times 1, times 2, times 1. That would be the dimension of the representation. So let's work out a couple of simple examples. Okay, I think that there's quite a good book by... Um, Renan, what's that guy's name of that book from the UNISA library? Oh, um, it's Fulton and Harris, okay? It's called Representation Theory, and there there's a nice discussion of, of Frobenius Schur duality, and that's where you can get these rules from. Fulton and Harris. You know, the details of the rule take a lot to get there, but I hope that you can see that there's a very simple idea at work here. And the idea that is at work is we can simultaneously diagonalize operators that commute. And the bunch of operators that we're looking at that commute with elements of SUN are the operators that would swap indices of these tensors. So irreducible representations of SUN will be tensors with definite symmetry and just permuting their indices, okay? So these diagrams are just ways of writing down what symmetries the tensor has. And then um, these rules, um, I mean, you'd have to go look in the math book and see where they're actually proved. Okay. So let's do a couple of examples, and we'll consider, let's say that we consider SU3 for concreteness. So we'll look at SU3. So let's look at a state that looks like this, or a representation that looks like that. What would the dimension of this um, representation be? So let's first of all go, let's put our weights down. So what number should I put in here? That should be n, right? And here n is 3. So we put a 3 here. What number do I put in here? 4. I increase it by 1. What number do I put in here? 2. I decrease it by 1. Now let's put in the hooks. So 
So if I think about a hook going through there or an elbow going through there, I pass through three boxes. Here, clearly, I only pass through one box. Here, I pass through one box. Okay? So what is the dimension of this representation? It would be 3 times 4 times 2 divided by 3. Well, the 3 is cancel. 2 times 4 is 8. This um, um, is an 8-dimensional representation. And, and often, you'll hear people talking about the 8. This is what they mean. This is the 8. Okay? Sometimes you'll find more than one representation with the same dimension. Then you'll hear people talking about 8 and 8 prime and 8 bar. Um, yes, Norm? Okay, the shape that we draw it in, if you remember, when we read down the diagram, the number of boxes in each row can't increase. Okay, it can stay the same or it could decrease. So that's a valid, a legal shape. And then we, we know that once we've drawn it, there's a way to extract from it a tensor that would have definite symmetries under interchange of indices. So you could start with the boxes and go to the tensor. If you gave me the tensor, I would start to swap around indices and figure out the symmetry. And once I'd figured out the symmetry of the tensor, I'd be able to draw the diagram. Because the, di a state, the diagram is just a statement of the symmetry of the tensor under swapping indices. Okay? Okay. So, so that's what we would have for SU3. And now let's consider another representation. Let's consider this one with three boxes. Okay. Now, now I, I really want you guys to tell me everything now. So what are the weights? What would the weights be? What should I put in the top box? Three. And now? Two and? Good. Now let's put the hooks in. What would the top box be? Three, great. This box? Two. This one? Now let's put the weights over the hooks. That's three times two times one over three times two times one. That's one. Is that right? Is that right? Yeah, that's perfect. Remember? Remember? N boxes is a scalar. What is n here? Three. Three boxes should be a scalar. How many different um, uh, states are there in this representation? One. So this thing mixes with nothing. It just stays the same. It is a scalar. OK? This would be the representation that particle physicists use when they say, we combine three quarks to get a singlet. OK? This is another way of writing down the statement that I told you yesterday that for SU3, epsilon ijk, the state with all three quarks, antisymmetric, is a singlet. All of these are the same statement, okay? So the shape of the diagram is coding in the symmetry of the tensor. That's the big um, point I'm trying to make. And, um, um, and, and why is that a good idea? Once again, because those operators that swap the indices commute with the elements of SUN. Okay, I may be doing something crazy now, but let's see if I can quickly show you the rules for multiplying these representations. So I, I hope I don't rush this too much. Just stop me if I do, and uh, yes, Noreen? Nope. Because it would go three, four, five. Happy with that? Good. That's a 10. Are, are you saying what would that correspond to? Well, that couldn't possibly... If you're thinking about SU3 as color, that couldn't be a valid state because that's not a singlet. Those are 10 things that mix with each other. We always want to get scalars. Okay? Oh, that would be a 10-dimensional representation of SU3. So it's irreducible? It's irreducible. It can't be reduced. So when you draw these pictures, these are the irreducible representations of SUN. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. Well, it depends what you mean by an interpretation. If you're thinking about this SU3 as SU3 color, okay, 
then, then in fact what you have written down would be something that we would expect to never see in nature because we would only like to see states